Hey guys, welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage, part four of our fuel injection conversion series. If you're new, welcome, but please go to number one. I actually go through why I'm going fuel injection and why I picked Vitek and explain what comes with the kit. But the rest of you, welcome. This is throttle body day. We get to put the throttle body on the engine. And I'm a little nervous about it because as you guys know, I've never done this before. And there's always risk when you put something modern on something old. It never seems to work quite right. And part of that is the throttle body linkages. How do we get our accelerator cable to fit and work right? And that's always takes some experimentation. And I'll walk you through what my setup is, which may give you some ideas for your project. Which reminds me, make sure you subscribe because we still have several episodes to go, like plumbing and first fire and... I don't even know if we're going to cover wiring today. I hope we do, but wiring might be another episode. And let's get going because I need to get under the hood, show you what I'm working with, and we'll go from there. Be right back. All right, guys, here's what I'm working with. A um, couple things to note. This is a Speed Demon 750. It's almost identical to the way a Holly would look. Now, the complications you guys are going to probably see is when you're changing from a stock carburetor, like if I still had my rochester quadrajet on here none of those linkages would be the same now luckily i think this actually matches uh what is on the new throttle body so we'll, we'll take this out and put on the workbench but i'm also excited because i get to remove this whole line and my mechanical fuel pump because we have the fuel pump in the trunk now those of you guys that are just putting the force fuel in the engine compartment you actually run this line to the force fuel. So that makes it really slick as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. I'll meet you at the workbench. All right, team, so this is what I was talking about. I had to come up with this crazy contraption to get my stock accelerator linkage to work. So it actually fits in here as a cotter pin. And I had to get this assembly, bore this out, so my stock unit can fit through here. And I got this whole a bracketry from JEGS. So JEGS has a really good line of, of um, brackets. This is just a safety spring to return back to normal. I'd like to try and retain this just for safety sake. Um, but just looking at it, looking at this assembly here, this whole throttle linkage, I like it because it looks very similar to throttle body this section right here so we can have we have holes to pick from i can put that return so i'm going to go ahead and try it right now on the workbench all right if you were curious what's going on here this is this is how it works it actually pulls helps you pull this throttle level back but what i noticed just playing with it this is a really stout return spring so i'm actually okay with not using the throttle emergency throttle return if you did there's a little boss on the back here it actually fits right in that hole and then i had to customize a cotter pin with some washers to space it and then i would just and i just put it in here like that and then another washer on the front with a cotter pin that's how i used it on my speed demon so the same thing would work here. I frankly don't think I need to. And ironically enough, I have the bracket without this spring on it. So I can just transfer this to here. Uh, my next step is I'm going to put this in the car just to test fit to make sure we're on the right holes. There's several holes here. And i um, pretty sure it's the, this forward facing hole, but I'm going to give it a shot. Oh, this is working perfectly. I don't have it super tightened down, but look at this. Nothing impeding our way. Oh, this is working out better than I thought. So, um, just so you guys know, if you're converting from another carburetor and you need a bracket like this, make sure you call Phytech because they have brackets that are for different applications. So make sure you check with them first. Second would be go to JEGS, okay? So go to Phytech to see if they have one. Now that said, Let's get back to the bench and see what we can do about our throttle position. All right, guys, here's the little linkage I pulled off um, my other, the carburetor, and it fits right in this hole. 
This is not getting, I can't make this any smoother for myself. This is crazy. I'm gonna go with this one for now and do another test fit in the car. It must be my lucky day. Look at this. So it's all bolted down. Look at the clearance here. I got like a mil and a half and I can do full stroke and it's not touching the bracket. Nothing ever works this good for me. So I guess the car gods have been looking out so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and get in the car and see what that pedal feels like while we're here. All right, let's see. Oh, that feels really good. Okay, that's all the way down. I just need to check the video, make sure I'm going full throttle. Woo, yeah. All right, guys, I'm so excited this thing works. So far, so good. We are going to start wiring. But before we do that, get your instructions. You have to look at these ports here. So remember, on my setup, I do not need a return line. The return line is right here. It comes right off this pressure regulator. So I'm going to take this off. And in the kit is another plug. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to tape it and mark it to remind myself because I haven't decided what port yet to use for my inlet. Obviously this one would be ideal because that's the back of the engine and we can hide the plumbing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and mark it. All right, time to break out the instructions because we're gonna go through wiring. In here, there's a few different ways to wire your system. So it's basically based on how you have your, your engine set up. This will not work with a points distributor. Okay, so this, for example, this diagram is a ready to run distributor without timing control. HEI distributor without timing. This is the one I'm gonna use. And then it goes into, do you have a 6AL? Do you want timing? Do you not want timing, etc. It's pretty, very self-explanatory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach all my wire harnessing and I'm gonna label all the wires while it's on my workbench as to which wires I need to use and where they need to go. Be right back. Here we go. As you can tell, everything's attached. I've attached all the harness extensions and you can't mix it up because they're all unique connectors. Handheld unit, this is the handheld extension. And most importantly, the um, temperature switch. It comes with an adapter if you need to put that in your um, intake manifold. But be aware, you do not want to put, don't put any Teflon tape on here. This is already has a unique coating on it. Um, too much Teflon tape and you can affect the circuit because this is a ground circuit. It needs to be connected metallically through your intake manifold so it can complete a circuit. So don't put a lot, any Teflon tape on there and maybe a tiny bit on here, but be aware that that can affect things. I would tighten that down as much as you can. Uh, the other things to note here. There's, on this particular unit, this is a power adder throttle body. That means this is for if you're going to put nitrous or a supercharger um, or whatnot, you need this harness. Now, since I'm not doing that now, um, I don't even have to use this part. So, one less thing to wire. Uh, there's another cable here that I don't need. This is only for if you're going to be using timing control. So, I don't need to use that one either. That's why I have it plugged in. <laughs> right here so I don't need to use that one um, I'm going to find out if I can disconnect it somehow but I don't think so it looks like it's hardwired in so no worries now around the throttle body you'll notice a whole bunch of different ports uh, there's a couple of vacuum ports on on front and rear one is a vacuum wide open throttle one is just standard vacuum they're capped already I don't need to use those um, there's two vacuum connectors here I do need to use this one. This is for your PCV or my PCV hose. And this one is for uh, any brake booster. If you're using a brake booster, I am not. So I'm not using that one. And we're basically good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in the car with all the wires attached. This is the, probably the most tedious part because we have to walk through where the wires go. I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna label the wires and notice I'm not using this one. I don't need that one. But all the other wires have these cool little labels on them. TAC. Obviously, that goes the TAC. So I don't need to label it. Fan relay. And this one is keyed power. 
So um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to mount, I'm going to go ahead and put my um, temperature sending unit in and then plop this on back on the car and let's see where all the wires end up. Now the things I do for you guys, <laughs> just kidding, but I am humping my engine right now, as you can tell, that's how I got this close. But we need to talk about uh, the distributor wire. So an HEI distributor is a power wire and the TAC wire. Now I'm noticing right away, this wire, you need like a 12 gauge or bigger to power that HEI. And since we're gonna be reading off that TAC, we don't wanna have any um, strangulation of power here because this is a 12 gauge wire. Clearly this is not 12 gauge. So I'm gonna take some time and rewire this one lead. I gotta trace it all the way back and change that wire. That's gonna take some time. And then the TAC wire here, I'm gonna take this connector off and our TAC lead, I'm gonna solder right to the same connector. So this goes to your gauge and then the other TAC wire goes to the EFI unit. So I'm also taking apart my existing wire harness. This is just some really cool wrap that you can get from uh, Painless Performance. Goes right over the wire, so. Oh man, here we go. I got that power lead pulled off the distributor and I wanted to show you while that's out of the car, it's really easy to show you this because if you're gonna splice into your tack at this connector, you actually have to take that pin out of there. Now what it looks like is this guy here, so this, this is a raw one, you see that tab on top? You have to depress that tab and then you can pull the, the pin out. So I just get like a tiny flat blade screwdriver and you just stick it in there. Like that. So what I did was I I basically pushed it in and then pushed down a little bit and then I pulled the wire and it comes right out. That's how you take those apart. So luckily I have extra terminals. Uh, so when I do the tack wire, I'm going to take, uh, I'm just going to cut the tack wire, restrip the tack wire and then add our other lead, crimp it and solder it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with this to our 12 gauge wire. So here's the, the original one. And I confirm this is 14 gauge and this is 12 gauge. A little bit bigger, so a little bit more uh, factor of safety there. And this one, nothing beats a really good crimp, which that is a really good crimp, except a good crimp and some solder. <laughs> because since this is attached to the, this is actually on the fuse box, but same point for the distributor side. Every time you take your cap off, you have to take this off every time, every time. And I had one time where I pulled the wire right out of that connector, but I didn't know it was loose. So when I went to start the car, it never started. So this one is crimped and soldered on the top. So the wire will not come out, which is what I want. So now we can take our handy dandy connector. You can tell I've taken it out a few too many times, but as long as it locks in there, like that, we're good. I know it looks like a rat's nest, but this is actually coming together pretty smoothly. So here are all the wires that need to go into my uh, cabin, so to speak. These are including the power wires. So if you guys remember, my battery's in the trunk. So you have to make sure the battery goes to your battery because that actually supports the memory. So when you turn off your car, since I have a cutoff switch, I have to figure out how to maintain battery when my cutoff switch is off, but that's my problem. Uh, this one goes to the fuel relay. Remember guys, we talked about that. So the orange one goes to the relay. And these are our wires that go to the temperature sending um, relay, sorry, the fan relay, the TAC, and we still have to find a keyed uh, 12 volt. This black one's not used. I could probably cut it off uh, somewhere in here so I don't have to waste wire. Um, and then we can literally tie these all together. Now, thing to be aware of is any high voltage near your power line. So the power is right here. All the fuses actually hide down in here. I'm putting them underneath 
the distributor cap because the coils firing up here it's a lot of uh, EMI created and so just making sure those are tucked away and so when I redo my harness the only thing I need to be aware of is that the alternator wire is coming through this harness in the back so if we ever have any EMI issues in the future I'll just rerun the power line somewhere else not near the alternator but that's just something to be aware of so I'm gonna start organizing the wires um, wow it's pretty straightforward so far where I'm going to be joining two wires together like a straight up butt splice I want to show you this cool product it's actually a solderable connector that has heat shrink around it so what you do is you get your two pieces of wire so in the instances where I'm actually using the fan switch and the 12 volt keyed switch I'm just going, joining a wire to a wire you just join the two twist the two wires around each other slip this over it and apply heat to it and you can use a lighter or you can use a, a heat gun watch that center section it actually solders the two wires together and heat seals it how cool is that so I'm gonna do that in the car I just figured I'd show you outside the car but I'll show you where I did it um, and then you can take some shrink tubing and put it over that section and voila pretty awesome I'll leave the link below of where to get these. You can get them on Amazon. All right, all right. It wasn't too bad. So here's all the wire harness connections, basically besides the O2 sensor. Um, here's the connection to the handheld unit, which goes through the firewall. I'll show you that in a second. Um, here's the wire for the TAC. The TAC goes, as promised, I wired it directly into the connector as you can see there so you have the gauge and our tack connect is soldered into that connector here's our bigger power unit for the HEI and then here's the two butt connectors I mentioned so one goes to 12 volt switch power which is this one this wire I wasn't using I think this went to the uh, old school type air conditioning unit I didn't use that wire but it is switch power I tested it and then this one goes to the, the fan relay so I took this lead was off of the original uh, sending unit so we're good there so I'm gonna zip tie all these together put that wire loom back on here we go guys wires are tucked away Looks awesome. You can't even see the wires down there. And there's the wire harness. Going through a pre-existing hole. I didn't know what that hole was for, but I had it available. I'll fill that hole in later, but that's the way it goes. Oh man, I can't stop staring at it. It's like I'm a fly attracted to a blue light and I'm going to get zapped if I get too close. <laughs> man, I just finished putting wire through the cabinet. It took me like four hours to pull wire, take the cabinet apart, etc. But I put in a three-way switch. So subscribe if you haven't because in a future episode I'm going to explain why and then you can implement it into your project if you want. It's all optional. But what we haven't done yet, because we're technically not done with the wiring, we haven't put in the oxygen sensor yet. This, this is not operational without it. It won't work. So we got to do that, and it should be entertaining, so subscribe if you haven't, because we're going to do it without taking the exhaust out and without welding. We will see, because I've never done it before. should be fun. So you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See it.